it's so great to film a video with your head cut off. <gasps> oh, I like this tripod, but I don't. Damn it. Getting seasick yet? <laughs> Look at the pimple. It's fabulous. Sure. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Kind of warm in here today i got my hair up i have a lot of things happening over here i have an entire cactus garden that i planted about two and a half years ago i have cacti that are just in separate containers that don't have any drainage that i've never really gotten around to repotting anyway how you guys doing i thought i could do like a little q and A. I I asked you guys over on Instagram to ask me any questions that you might have and um, you came through with some questions. So I'm gonna pull that up in a second. I have my gloves here that are not the ones I wanted. I wanted my other ones, but I think my other ones are downstairs and I'm just not gonna take the time to go get them. But on top of gloves, I have a good old pair of kitchen tongs. These work great for handling cactus. These are the ones specifically that have the rubber tip around the edge. You don't really want to use metal because you can scar your cactus. So we're going to use these two. Okay, I'm just going to hop on into this and we're going to get to talking. Oh, I should take off my wedding ring. Ow, let's not forget that that's there. How many of you guys take off your ring or like rarely ever take off your wedding ring? And then when you do, and you forget to put it back on, you catch yourself without your ring, you're like, the world stops. Like you think you lost it. That's happened to me a few times. I take it off at night because my fingers swell at night. It's probably not a good thing. These gloves are okay, but they definitely don't protect my hands from spines. So yeah. Oh, I should have, I should have opened my phone. Do these work? <laughs> Why would they? What is your least favorite plant in your collection right now? My least favorite plant. Maybe my Diffenbachia. It hasn't been doing very well. It's in Lekka and it, the leaves keep drooping. I don't know. I think I need to take it out of Lekka and put it in soil because it's starting to outgrow the pot. And I just think that it really loved being in Lekka for a long time. But I don't know, it's up there and it's kind of droopy. And it's not giving me any real like new big leaves. So this is just like a little cash po that this is in. So I'm gonna, look at, it lifted right out of there. It's got some, it's got some pretty good roots on it. I wanna kind of get that close to the camera so you can see. Yeah, I'm not gonna mess with that too much. The soil is really dry. So I had it in a cash po. Then I had it in this Ikea container, which doesn't have drainage, which was also in a net pot. <laughs> Does this make any sense? This is cute for like paper clips, not a plant. You go over there. I'm not gonna save this little cash pot, even though it's the cutest little cash pot I've ever seen. <laughs> oh, I already got poked. Dang it. But this is a really cute, not cash pot, net pot I meant. This is a cute cash pot. Isn't it adorable? I got this from Plant Theology over on Instagram. I love it. It's a great little little lecka pot. Okay, we're gonna put this little guy into this little terracotta. All of these plants are going in terracotta. Good old fashioned orange terracotta, which I love. Okay, I have my De La Tanks soil over here. I'm gonna need to buy another bag about halfway gone already. Let's try not to make a mess here. Um, what was the question? Oh, my worst, my worst plant right now. Yeah, probably my Diffenbachia. I don't, I mean, I'm not really like not liking all of my plants right now. They're doing pretty good. I think I'm gonna give them fertilizer like within the next few weeks, like their first dose of fertilizer for the year. But um, my Lekka plants just got a new water. 
last week. So they're happy. Ooh. Okay. I took some of the soil off because it was dry. It looks like there's some sand in there. This is like an I the Ikea potting mix. So who knows what the heck is in that? It looks like sand or salt. What the frick? That's weird. Okay. The next question is, how long does it take me to edit a wedding gallery? I'm a wedding photographer. For all you newbies here, hi, welcome. My name's Nicole <laughs> and I'm a wedding photographer. I didn't see who asked me this question. I wonder if they're one of my clients, <laughs> like waiting on their gallery. No, I actually don't have any outstanding galleries out there right now because it's down season. And I am on top of my game right now. It's a couple of weeks. And the reason why it takes so long is because I'm the only one that does it. Like we don't have a staff, me and Jay. And I do all the editing for the weddings, but I also shoot all the weddings. So, and I shoot like engagement sessions midweek. And then I have YouTube. So like, it's rare that I can sit down and like knock out a wedding in a couple of days. But if I have the time, I do. I'm down time, down season. I usually could do that. I could just plant myself on my couch and put a movie on and go through it fairly quickly. But some galleries require more attention than others. Some days are busier than others. Some weddings have more, a lot more people in their wedding party. So it's a lot more editing. So it really all just depends, but on average, I'd say a couple of weeks. My turnover time though is four to six weeks in the down months and six to eight weeks in the summer. Because if I shoot three weddings in a weekend, <laughs> that puts me out, you know? How cute, that looks so much better. It was like leaning forward in that other planter. Ugh, I'm so happy I'm doing this. I have needed to do this for a long time. Now this one, <laughs> This is a spiny pincushion cactus. Put the label back in there. This little guy, I wanna say is the same thing as that. Oh no, I think it's different. I'm not sure. But this little cactus has not had any soil in it for like a year. It's literally just rocks. I had it outside, it got knocked over and I neglected it. <sighs> I know, I know, I know. Don't come at me in the comments. Look at that's all it has. Oh my God, I'm a terrible plant person. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. You leaving? Okay. I love you. <laughs> Look at it, it's all my cactus. I'm repotting. It's fun. Someone asked us what our origin story is. You want to tell people? <laughs> not really. <laughs> I'm looking at the sun out there. I'm like, okay, it can't be that bad. I'm not gonna put this on. And I look at my watch. It says 16 degrees. You know? No, it's okay. and it feels like two degrees. Really? Yeah. Bye. It even had a leaf in it from outside. <laughs> okay. Next question is. How on earth do you survive eight years being a stay-at-home mom? I'm on year two and I can't, <laughs> I'm barely surviving. Okay, it is a lot more difficult to be a stay-at-home mom when your kids are younger. Our kids are older now. They're, they range from <laughs> 11 to uh, 16. 11, no, 12, oh gosh, 12 to 16. So they're definitely self-sufficient at this point. We're past that baby stage. I do feel for you or any mother or father or parent who is out there staying at home with your kids instead of going out to work. I'm not saying that going to work is any easier, but being a stay-at-home mom, stay-at-home dad is definitely not talked about as much. Let's normalize how difficult it is to be a stay-at-home parent. Look at that. Cute, cute. Yeah, I know, I started a daycare. So that's kind of how I spent the first eight years of her life, really. Um, I mean, once your child's in school, it'll also become a little bit easier because you'll have that nice chunk of break in the middle of the day. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's not, it's not an easy thing. It's very hard when you're 
a stay-at-home mom, but you also work from home, that's a whole other level of difficult. Or parent, sorry. I keep saying mom because I'm a mom. Um, but yeah, it's not, it's not an easy thing. So hang in there, breathe. Make sure you take some time for yourself. Um, if there is another parent involved, pass the buck off to that person. Take some time for yourself. Okay, we're moving on. I don't know if I want to put this one in a big pot. Yeah, let's do that. We're going to do this pot, which has a little patina on it. How cute. And we're doing this one. Oh, shit. I got soil on my battery. Ah. Uh, this one is a Bergerol cactus, MRI. MRI. -I. And uh, it's also called a golden snake cactus. That's the more common name. But isn't this cool? My daughter got this for me for Christmas two years ago. And another Ikea pot. And it's been doing great. <laughs> no drainage hole. I barely water it. It's just, it's time. It's time for a repot. Yeah, you, you can tell. Ugh, let's clean that out. Look at that. Look at those roots. Whoa. That's impressive. I don't think it would have done very well much longer though in here. So I'm going to kind of break this apart a little bit because same thing with the sand. Like what on earth is Ikea using as a medium? Well, it's not Ikea. It's wherever they get their plants from, which I'm not sure where they come from. I'd be curious to know if you know where Ikea plants come from. <sighs> Let's ask another question, shoot. This might be a question that takes me the rest of the video to answer. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the Rosen Jack door situation? <laughs> okay, those of you that know me know that I'm a Titanic buff. I love Titanic. I actually have some cleaning to do later today, so it might be a Titanic day, guys. Actually, my husband's not here. I know it'll be a Titanic day because he's the only one that's like, oh my God, a Titanic again? I won't have to deal with him telling me that. But my thoughts on the door situation. It might be a little controversial, but it played out the way it should have played out. I know. Listen, I do I think there was enough room on the door for both of them? Sure, there probably was. But have y'all ever been in the middle of the ocean, a wavy ocean that's like 10 degrees that just sunk a ship? So there's all that current action happening, all these people struggling around you, trying to get on top of a door. Like, have you ever been in that situation? No. You haven't. So I feel like, well, I'm sorry if you have been. <laughs> For starters, maybe I shouldn't assume. That was probably a difficult task because he got her up there. There was nobody around to help him get up there. And if there was somebody around to help him get up there, they probably would have got up there themselves or like, you know, bulldoze the door. Like, let's just stop thinking about how Jack could have got on the door and let's realize and, and be thankful that Rose was able to get on the door without people pulling her under. Because if there were more people around, it would have capsized. Like it would have, it would have, uh, I'm having a difficult time here. It would have, people would have swarmed the door. So like, let's just be thankful that she got on there, you know? I mean, I've heard everything. I've heard people say like, She's selfish, like he could have easily got up there. She should have been in the water, he should have been there. Like, come on, like he was not gonna let that happen. So that's my thought. I think that it played out how it should have played out. I think James Cameron did a good job of analyzing that entire situation. But I also think that he made that scene with the intent of this conversation being ongoing. <laughs> I think he knew it was gonna get a little bit of pushback. Like everybody in the theater, listen, I saw that movie in the theater four times. Everyone each time at that part was like, get on the door, <laughs> move over bitch. I think we need to think about that scenario a little bit more, analyze it a little bit better. And you're gonna come to the realization that 
it was just probably too much for him to get up there without tipping the door over, you know? Okay, look at that. Cute, cute. I love it, I love it, I love it. Now it has more room, more space to grow. Ooh, I'm not gonna mess, but the good thing about this is that these mats on this portfolio, not portfolio, plant folio, sorry, they lift right out. So you can just shake this outside, shake it in your, you know, wherever you recycle your soil or whatever you do. If it's trash, throw it in the trash. You don't have to like do a ton of cleanup. Like cleanup's pretty easy with plant folio. I'll link this in the description below because I also have a code for you guys to use. So, okay. All right, now I have this one. This is my Faro cactus. This is also a cash po that it's in. This, oh shit. Faro cactus. I got this in um, Arizona. It's so beautiful, it's spineless. Uh, it's so pretty. So I think what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna put it in one of these um, because it's about the same size. And I don't think that it needs me to upsize it, so. Cool. Okay. I'm gonna take a little bit of the soil off of there. I don't wanna mess with the roots too much, but I do wanna give it some fresh soil. This was a pretty good blend. Look at that, there we go. Ooh, it's so cool. Okay. I'm gonna put some of this stone that came out of here. It's lava stone from um, Bonsai Jack's Lava Stone, and I love it. I don't have any right now. I usually use it to top off my cactus, or I put some in the soil, but this De La Tank soil is so great that I really don't have to add any additives to it. Um, but I don't wanna waste it, so I'm gonna put it in here. Pest free, so you don't have to worry about your pests. There we go, why not? I have to order more Bonsai Jack lava stone i'll have that link below it's it's pretty much just this like they're little chunks of lava stone i don't know if you could see it just focusing on my face um but you've seen it in my plants before it's usually i usually use it as a top dress uh, another question <laughs> what do you think life would be like if becca and not dude lived nearby I think that would be a lot of fun. I think if we were closer, if we lived closer to each other, we would definitely hang out more. Um, we do make it a point to get together at least twice a year, I feel like it's been. At the time you're seeing this video, Becca's actually in town. <laughs> She's visiting me. Um, I'm recording this on the Sunday before, so you'll see this on the 18th, I think it is. But her book signing is tomorrow tomorrow at plant shop chicago so if you're watching this and you're in the chicago land area be sure to come on out and visit us we're both gonna be there she's gonna be signing books you could pick up a book house plants for beginners i didn't think this was gonna turn into a promo video but i just realized that at the time you're watching this we're gonna be hanging out together that's so much fun the only thing I am regretful of is that the fact that Adam can't come. Um, I think he's got a trip a couple days after she's leaving here. So it's like our schedules didn't coincide this time around. But I'm trying to plan something for later this year. I don't know if I'm gonna go to Arizona. I don't know if we're gonna meet up and like go somewhere we've all never been before. That sounds like a lot of fun. So something else will happen later this year. We're just, we need to plan it. Look at this, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. It looks so much better. We'll, go, we'll move on to my cactus gardens. We'll get deconstructing those. But anyway, so I would love to meet you guys. If you guys are in town, come on out to Plant Shop Chicago. I'll leave the details in the description box below. We have some things planned. I want to take her to like downtown Chicago tomorrow and you know see all the touristy stuff like the bean and 
get some Garrett's popcorn and maybe some Giordano's pizza. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I definitely want to take her to all the touristy places because she's never been to Chicago. So I think it'd be really cool to get a picture of her like against the skyline for her travel documents, documenting her travels. Okay, this is huge. I don't know if you guys remember when I did these, but all of these cactus are from CVS. <laughs> I got these beautiful planters. I can't remember where I got them from. Maybe Target? and um they're concrete and i just i love them so much and i was like you know what i'm gonna do a cactus garden and i didn't want to spend a ton of money on cactus so i went to cvs it was during the summer and they had all these cacti and i was like oh my gosh they were not this size but it was fun it, like it worked out you know so i'm going to deconstruct this here and my assumption is that these are rooted pretty well in this pot. Oh, because they've been in there for a while. I think we're going to have to weasel their way out of here. Look at that. It's not easy doing this because they're sharp. <laughs> and I don't want to hurt my cactus. Wow. Hmm. This is interesting. I'm really trying to get under there to like, because I'm sure the roots spread. Yeah, look at that. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Uh, the roots on this are quite incredible. I, there may be some rot. I don't know. This is one of those situations where you can't really... Look at that! Oh no! The roots are getting pretty damaged. That sucks. But cactus are so resilient. I'm not really worried about it. Oh, it's all coming out. Oh boy. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay. Sorry, I can't answer questions and do this at the same time. It's so nerve wracking. Ah, I thought it was out. Holy, holy shit. <laughs> My camera stopped recording. I don't know how much you got of that. I think most of it. I'm really scared of getting like poked by a cactus. This is a lot of soil too, goodness. Now this cactus, um, I'm not sure if this is sun damage or if it is scale. <laughs> when you pot cactus together, they're gonna grow together and their roots get all intertwined. But oh my gosh, this soil is so dry. Okay, look at that. That's a nice root system. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, but I wanted to show you um, the stuff on it. Now see that? See how I, I'm not sure if it's scale, if there's like some down here too. Um, it very well might be, but what concerns me is it didn't spread to any other cactus. Usually it will when you have cactus potted together. So, oh my gosh, this is so huge. I can't believe how big this has grown. Um, maybe there is some scale in here. Let me show you. Well, I don't want to get soil all over the table, but you know, here we are. Wait. It's like right in this cactus area here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you can see it, but um, there might be a little bit of scale there. Are those, unless they're mealies, 
Melius? No, that's not Melius. I don't think. No, that's not Melius. It might be scale at the base, and then that would make sense. But you know what? I'm going to repot them. I'll treat them separately um, for scale. I'll just spray them with a little bit of alcohol and water. It might not work. Sometimes with scale, you have to scrape it off. It's usually what you have to do is scrape it off. But anyway, we'll see. Oh my gosh, this is like a total mess here. Okay, I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean this up, get these over on this side of my plant folio and bring all of this soil out. Look at this little guy. This old man cactus. <laughs> okay, so we're going to pop these up individually and then I'll get them all cleaned up. I might have to use like some dead bug brew on it. It's this there's very little things that work for scale. It's usually really hard to deal with. And if it gets all over your plant and spreads, um, it will obviously ruin your plant. But ooh, I'm wondering if this needs a bigger pot. Nah, that's perfect. Ooh, these spines are very fierce. I gotta look for another question. If I'm being honest, to just be real quiet and to repot, it's so therapeutic. But I like talking to you guys though. So that's why I wanted to record this one. Oh, I know what we'll talk about. I visited a small greenhouse um, called Friendship Park Conservatory. Yeah, not greenhouse, it was a conservatory. The other day, I'll insert some clips here. It was so cute, it was so, so cute. I thought that it was gonna be bigger. It's literally only 15 minutes from me, so I didn't mind the drive. Um, but it was funny, cause I got there and they said that they opened at 10 and no one was there. So I like, I like called the office and I was like, is anybody gonna be there? And they're like, oh my gosh, nobody's there. So like they thought something happened to their employee. It was this big thing. But someone finally ended up showing up and I got out of my car and went back in <laughs> and uh, really enjoyed it. It was super, super cute. So if you're in like the Mount Prospect area, um, I'm in Palatine. Like I said, it was only 15 minutes for me. It was, a, it was a cute little visit. They had some nice plants there. And um, I wouldn't mind going back again, like maybe in the summer to see what kind of plants they have then, if they switch them out. Um, but it was cute, I liked it a lot. And then something else we could talk about, I got this, these cute, cute plant stands from Mudella. Mudella reached out and asked if they can send me some plant stands. And I was like, sure, you can send them to me. Jay actually took them to his studio for a few of his plants and he's gonna like do a photo shoot with them. They're really cute. They're really easy to put together. So it was just like three legs. And I really like the aesthetic of them. They almost, they give off like little nightstand vibes, but like imagine like your nightstands and then putting one on either side of your nightstand with a plant, like in your bedroom. They'd be so cute. Hang like a little grow light over them. But Anyway, I thought that they were really cute and I really liked them. And thank you so much, Mudella, for actually sponsoring today's video. I really appreciate it. Check out their stuff. I will put a link in the description below um, if you wanna go check it out. And then what else? There was something else I wanted to talk to you guys about. Lively Root sent me some plants again. Um, do you remember Lively Root? That's where I got my, I have my, bird's nest fern down here and then i have a pilea peperomoides over there they're doing really well um but they sent me air plants they sent me spanish moss i hung it from my daughter's window so it's like just hanging in the middle of the window i think it's getting the perfect amount of light and it looks so cool up there and then they sent me this huge air plant that i put in this cute little jar um it's like a it's it's like a pencil holder i got it at the store and it looks like her hair i love it so much <laughs> thank you lively root for sending those i'm thanking a lot of people for a lot of things in this video 
<laughs> Look at that. So cute. So the root rot that I was a little suspicious about is right at the base there. So I don't know if you could see that there. But I'm going to... I'm going to probably treat it with just a little bit of alcohol and water and then I'm going to leave it alone and see what it does. This plant is super healthy so I think we're good. I'm, I'm just not going to worry about it too much. Okay I think that this one is perfect because it is deeper than this one so it's got some height to it and it's around the same size so this will be perfect for this. We're going in. Okay, I think we are good to start backfilling it. What else can we talk about? I'm so bad at these videos. <laughs> Gloves are doing a pretty good job, I must say. Well, okay, so not summer, summer, but I'm definitely ready for spring. I feel like I'm over winter. I'm just over it. Um, I enjoy the time off this time of the year because I'm a wedding photographer, so I don't shoot a lot during the winter. It's my downtime, but I do get restless, I start to get antsy and there's nothing to do outside. Like there's no gardening stuff to be done yet. And it's just kind of like mid-February, you know, I'm so excited though that Becca's coming or that she's here. Because then I can, you know, have some socialization again. I haven't seen my friends in forever. And my sister and my other friend, like, they just have so much going on because they have little kids. Oh, it's hard. It's hard adulting, you know. Okay, this is so cute. Look at that. Perfect. Now I'm going to show you what I believe to be scale. Um... That does not look good. And then all up here, maybe scale, maybe sun damage. I honestly think that this is all sun damage and that down here is scale. And that would make sense because that's around the same spot as the other cactus had it. I'm glad that I put it in that deeper pot because it would have been way too top heavy for <laughs> For the little one okay now i'm gonna take this one and we're gonna put this guy in there and this i believe is a spiralis look at that spiral action i think that this is a spiralis and the fact that i found this at cvs kind of blows my mind if you never picked up a camera what do you think you'd be doing for a living wow Honestly, I'm not sure. A very long time ago, I was in management for a while. I know I've talked about this on this channel before. I was an operations manager for um, ooh, Export Fitness. And then I was a district manager for Ultimate Exposure Tanning Companies. I might be in some corporate management position. I can see myself doing that. If I didn't decide not to go back to work, like if I decided to go back to work, that's essentially what I would probably be doing. But I've always been a person that was just kind of like, whatever opportunity comes my way, I'm gonna roll with it. Like I was never opposed to different lines of work, obviously. If I went from doing that to owning my own daycare to owning my own photography company, it's a very, <laughs> it's a very diverse, resume you know like i don't think anyone in my life would have expected me to ever own a daycare or to ever have a photography company i think i just kind of go where life takes me and try to do the things that i enjoy doing and once i don't enjoy those things anymore then it's like on to the next I have been collecting houseplants now for a little over three years and when I started YouTube I never thought that I would get this far and this is another career now. Your girl paid taxes this year on my clean leaves 
So it's, you know, it's just one of those, I, I feel like I'm just one of those types of people that kind of just goes wherever the wind's gonna take me. <laughs> as cliche and cheesy as that sounds, I don't know. I've never really been the type of person to want to have a job, meaning like working for someone else. But I actually just got done having an interview with a company for director of photography in a larger company because I was thinking about slowly getting out of weddings and possibly only doing like one wedding a month eventually. I would like to get there um because this is our ninth year well going on 10 years of doing photography and uh i'm getting older and i know that in 10 years from now i'm not going to have the stamina <laughs> at least i don't think i am to keep up with weddings so it's only like a natural progression i feel and to be back in management and to be a director of photography would probably be something that i'd be really good at i think um it just ended up not being the right fit yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really opposed to anything. If it's what's, if it's what I feel is right in my heart, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. But right now, I guess I'm kind of content. I think I have a five-year plan of possibly not being, doing exactly what I'm doing today is working two to three weddings a weekend and hustling to edit and being extra busy for eight months out of the year. You know? Okay, look at that. That is so cute. I feel like this was not getting as much glory and attention as it should have in that cactus garden. And now I'm excited about it. This is definitely going outside this summer. Okay, I'm going to take a little break, get a little bit cleaned up, and we'll come back. And then we're going to deconstruct that other cactus garden. Okay. Moment of truth. Look at this. This has quite a bit in there. Okay. Gloves need to go on. Okay. All right. While we're doing this, let's talk about travel. In one of my last videos, I was talking about taking a trip somewhere and how me and Jay were, we didn't know if we wanted to go out of the country this year or if we wanted to take like a bigger trip next year for our anniversary. And I think we decided that we're going to stay somewhere pretty close this year. Like maybe just go to a local beach somewhere rent an Airbnb, keep it pretty low key, um, and then go somewhere big next year. But now my mom asks me the other day, she's like, hey, do you guys have your passports? And I was like, no, we gotta get them. And she's like, well, you better get them because I think we want to go to Aruba. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Like, I don't know if I could afford Aruba this year, mom. She's like, well, just get them. Just, just, just get them just in case. So I have a feeling she might be up to planning a trip for everyone. I love my mom because my mom and my stepdad are just amazing. And they've done this before where they've planned something and I don't know. I just have a feeling my mom is so restless and she really wants us all to be able to go somewhere. And I'm just like, man, I don't know. I blocked out some time on my calendar just because I didn't know if me and Jay were gonna do anything big this year for anniversary. So I have the time off. I just don't know about like traveling. Oh, this is, this is a workout about traveling out of the country this year. I don't know. So we'll see. Stay tuned. I don't know. Look at this. Okay. These roots are absolutely incredible. Wow. I think that this cactus might be dying. This little one. Let's see. Whoa. Whoa. Ah! Okay. No pests at all that I could see. This one. I don't know if this one is. You know, I think it's just a lot of scale. There is definitely scale on this one. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. See that? Darn, this one's so cool too. It's all hairy. Oh yeah, I think it might be pretty bad. We'll wait and see what I want to do with that. I don't know yet. Um, oh, these look good. Look at that. I'm sure I'm gonna get some comments that were like, 
You should have did it this way and you're ruining the roots. I don't mean to mock you guys. Most of you guys don't do that, but some do. Look at how beautiful that is. Wow. Look at all those roots. <gasps> oh, the spine broke. I thought that was a spider. Thought it was a big spider, but it wasn't. Look at these roots. Look at that. Ooh, she's a beaut. That looks pretty good. Might have a little bit of scale. Look at this one. Ooh, this soil's so dry. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Look at that. And these were, they were, they're planted kind of far into the soil. So like they're twice as big as I expected them to be. But this is the one that's like, whoa. Look at that. Oh, I gotta get all that soil off, but some nice roots on these bad boys. Okay, sorry if the screen changed a little bit. I had to change my battery. Okay, I think I'm gonna do the big ones first and I'm gonna use this big planter. So I'm curious to know if anyone's going out of the country. Like, if you live in Canada, are you traveling outside of Canada? If you live in the US, are you traveling outside of the US? If you live in Australia, are you coming here? Um, just curious to know, like, I guess it would all depend on how COVID is wherever you're at, but I feel like it's getting better, guys. Like, mask mandates are lifting, as controversial as that is. Um, stuff's not shutting down, like, we're pretty good, you know? So I'm hoping that by the summer, we'll be in good shape and things will be a little bit, you know, we'll get back to a little bit more of some normalcy. I'm trying to get the, <laughs> all the soil off of the, it's hard when it's all in here. <laughs> I think I got it, all right, going in. Oh, this is the perfect pot. I'm glad I grabbed it. Perfect. All right. My battery died. <laughs> Let me show you my plants. I got them all done. Sorry you didn't, get, you didn't get to see all of those in there, but here they are. They look great. I really, really love how all of these turned out. They're so, so cute, and they look great in their own little terracotta pots. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with those... Um, those planters. I might plant something else in there, so stay tuned. But I love how all these look, and now I'm so excited to get my shelves organized, get these on these heat mats for the rest of the winter, and hopefully they'll just do really, really good. All right, guys, that's it. I'm so happy you joined me in today's video. Thank you for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next Friday. Oh, and if you're in town, don't forget, come to Plant Shop Chicago tomorrow. Come visit me and Becca, February 19th, 2022, if you're watching this in the future, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll see you there. Bye.